Hello and welcome. In this video, we're essentially going to be seeing a attack path that leads to us having to do port forwarding. We're going to show you how to identify that port forwarding is what we need in this video and also how to exactly perform it in my preferred method. And this is going to be incredibly valuable for you if you're intending to do the OCP or something like that. So I hope you learned something new. Please enjoy the video. So SSL into you. So yeah, this is some type of web server that, let's say. So now I want to look at the processes running. Then mm. I grab for 8080. Okay, so this is a Docker. Okay, and this is the IP. Yeah, all right. So that's so this is the Docker on this interface. Huh? And it has a website as well. So... <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to try to do it from here. I would like to access it uh, from my own web browser. So we need to do some pivoting. So this would be cool. <laughs> now, what I like to do is that I like to use Chisel typically. Uh, chisel GitHub. And yeah, it's also running uh, under the context of root as well. So this is worthwhile to check out. Let's say chisel. And then we go to releases right there. And then we Grab this one right here. So, W get. Um, gun step. Chisel. So now we have that right there. Let's make it executable. Let me move it to just chisel like so. And if I run it like so, it has a server and a client feature. Okay. So we can grab the chisel binary like so. And then in the meantime, let me check my notes for chisel. So port forwarding tunneling. We can really do two different things here. We can do dynamic SOX tunneling, which I would recommend for pivoting into different networks. It's very useful for AD. I have shown you it uh, in different videos. And we can also, but you need to do um, proxy chains for it. But it will work in this scenario. It's typically more flexible and I tend to prefer it. Or you can put forward a just a single port. So let's say we're only interested in the 880. We can do that. But um, but I would like to show the, the SOX tunneling because it's just more flexible, to be honest. So let us do that. So let's make it executable. And now we can run chisel client or IP8081 R SOX, I think it is. Yes, and the reason why it's put 8081 it's because on uh, let's say mm -mm -mm. we're on the wrong box, so it's internal. Let's say that was the box I did earlier. So, um, so we copy up 
at tools previous chisel. We copy it to this directory right here. And then we can run this chisel binary. And we can run it as a server on port 8081 in reverse mode. So what that will do is that it will open up a port for us on port 8081. And that's the port that we want to connect to as the chisel client. So when this connects, I'll run this in the background. You see that it's connected. Uh, and you can also see that session one has been established listening. Now, one thing that you, I would advise you do is that you go to Etsy proxy chains, and then you change this to port with uh, 10,080, or at least that tend to be my preference, but then have it as SOX5, that's important. So just make sure you change this and the rest is fine. And now we can prepend commands with proxy chains. And it will essentially allow us to access internal services. Um, because, let's say, so nmap the So, it does not have 8080 rights, this would have shown. But, it has port 8080 running right here. And we can forward this on our Kali machine, so that through proxy chains, uh, on our lo or own local host, we can actually reach it. Um, like so, see? So yeah, the moment I cut this one off and I try to connect again, it won't reach it. So I establish the connection once more. It's connected. I can reach it, right? So the cool thing is that we can go to internal THM. Actually, we don't need that. So let me show you how to get access to it in the... Uh, Poxy Poxy. Now, I can delete it to show you. So you pretty much just go here to options. And you go to proxies and you add a proxy. We can call this one proxy chains. The type is not HTTP. We want it to be a SOX5. Because remember, that is uh, what we had in the... Uh, That is what we had in the proxy chain configuration file. Hostname, we want it to be our local host. And then the port will be 1080 because that's where our SOX proxy is running. So now we can save that. And we connect to the proxy chains. And now if we go to 0001, we can actually see a Jenkins server running here as well, which is uh, which is super cool. Now it has port it has um, port eighty as well, and as we can see, we can actually see this because again, with the dynamic port forwarding through proxy chains, we get to forward a lot of different ports eh? with a single port forwarding like you can do like this right eh? um, it can be a bit quicker if you want to do brute forcing or scanning or something like this and you know that you only want to do one port but I just find this one to be very flexible um, so yeah internal THM or 8080, no wait, sorry, localhost. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. There we go. So we have a Jenkins server. Um, also, uh, I think admin, admin is the default, but obviously it's no guarantee at all. Now, if you enjoy how I teach and you enjoy this video and you want to take the OCP 
then what are you doing not being in this course? It's over 15 hours long and it covers everything that you need. If you're only watching the videos on YouTube, you're missing out a lot because it's over 15 hours of content. You will get access to the VIP section on Discord where you can ask me any questions and you can study alongside all the other students in our course right now. You will also get access to this checklist right here, which will cover at least 95% plus of all the attacks and all the techniques that you need to know for every single section. Not only initial access, but AD, pivoting, Linux, and Windows privilege escalation. And the goal for you is to reach proficient or at least basic competence on all of them. That's one of the things. We also have this entire roadmap right here, where there's a bunch of action steps and a bunch of cheat sheets inside all of these hyperlinks that I can't show you in this video. But once you've completed all of them, you know for a fact that you will be ready to get into the OCP exams and absolutely crush it. If that sounds interesting to you, to get all of this in 15 hour plus of <laughs> video footage from someone who has OCP, who explains different attacks and techniques and methodologies, it's going to be invaluable to you. Now, some people are confused with the offer. If you're interested in the notes, these are the notes that you will constantly see me use in the videos, right? They're pretty much recommended to go hand in hand with the course, and I use them constantly in the course itself, right? So I think you'll find it extremely useful. That's also why we have the third offer, which is the bundle where you can buy both of these together for a discount. I hope that clarifies things. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I really hope this will be massively useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.